Hey guys! Recently, Alibaba released a new control net for Zimage Turbo, and this time, it supports in-painting. So, in this video, let's see how we can do in-painting with this new control net. Let's get started. The download link for this control net is available in the description. Once you open the link, you will see a page like this. To download the control net, click on Files and Versions. In here, there are two control nets available. One is 2.0 and the other is 2.1. 2.0 had some issues, so the developer made a new control net, which is 2.1, so I suggest downloading 2.1. Use the download button to get the control net. After downloading, let's see where we need to put the control net in Comfy UI. Open the Downloads folder, then open the Models folder of Comfy UI. Then, find and open the folder called Model Patches. This is where we need to put the control net made for Zimage Turbo. Now, Let's switch to Comfy UI. So in here, I already made a workflow for using the new control net. The download link for this workflow is available in the description. To use this workflow, you need three custom node packs, which are LandPaint, Comfy UI KJ nodes, and RG3 Comfy. If you don't have these custom node packs, use the Comfy UI manager to install them. Now, I will give you a basic overview of this workflow. Some parts of the workflow you may already understand if you already used Zimage Turbo. So I will focus on the control net part of this workflow. So if your Comfy UI is updated, you will get a new node called Zimage Fun Control Net. This node can take a control map and also do in-painting tasks as well. I added this node between Model Sampling Aura Flow and Land Paint K Sampler. Then, for loading the control net, we will be using Model Patch Loader. Make sure you have selected the Zimage Turbo Fun Control Net Union 2.1 in Model Patch Loader. Then, I have connected the Model Patch Output to the Model Patch Input of Zimage Fun Control Net. Next, I connected the VAE input of the Zimage Fun Control Net node to the VAE output of Load VAE. You can see the image input, which is empty. It is used for taking a control map. Currently, we don't need it, so let's keep it empty. Then we have the inpaint image input, which is used for connecting the image we are going to do the inpainting on, and the mask input is for connecting the mask that is needed for inpainting. Then we have this load image node for loading the images that we are going to edit. The image and the mask we draw go through this group, which will scale the image to one megapixel and scale it properly again before sending the image and mask into the Z image fun control net node. Regarding the strength I am using, we can try values between 0.6 and 0.9. Right now, I am using 0.7, which most of the time gives me stable results. Also, in this group, we have this node called Grow Mask with Blur, which can be used for smoothing the edges of the mask and expanding it. The image is also sent into the VAE encode node, which transforms the image into a latent. Then, it is sent to the Set Latent Noise Mask node. The set latent noise mask will combine the mask and latent, then send it to the land paint K sampler. Now moving on to the land paint K sampler, I am using the random seed option. For steps, I am using 15. If you want to speed up the generation, you can use 10, but I am using 15 because it produces better results. For the CFG value, I am using 1.0. One thing you need to know is that you can use a CFG above 1.0, and it can also give you some good results. For the sampler, I am using Euler, but we can also use Res Multistep. The scheduler I am using is simple. The denoise value is 1.0 and land paint num steps is 1. We can increase it, but it will slow down the generation. Then, the latent output of the land paint K sampler goes to VAE decode, which will decode the latent into a pixel image. The VAE decode will then send the image to the save image node and image comparer for image comparison. Now that you have an idea of this workflow, let's do an inpainting task. So let's move to the image loader. I have already selected an image. What I am going to do is change her hair color. First, I need to draw a mask. So let's right click on the image and click on open in mask editor. In here, let's select the mask brush. I am going to adjust the mask brush settings now. Let's adjust the thickness of the brush. I think that looks good. Then let's adjust the opacity. I am going to put it on max. For hardness, I'm going to put it on minimum, and for step size, I'm going to put it on minimum as well. Then there is the mask opacity feature, but I think there's no need to change this. Now let's draw around the area where we are going to do the in-painting. I am going to draw the mask around her hair. 
I think this looks fine. Let's save the mask by clicking on the Save button. Now that the mask is saved, let's move on to the prompt. I already wrote a prompt, which is add a red hair. Now, let's run the workflow and wait for the result. The generation is completed. Now let's take a look at the result. Well, as you can see here, the result looks really good. If we compare the result with the original, we can see how the result turned out. I love this result. If we want a different look, we can try another generation, but right now I am happy with the result. So let's try another in painting. I am going to choose another image, so let's select this image of a woman inside a train. Let's click open. This time, we are going to change her dress to a Christmas suit. Let's right click and open the mask editor. I am going to draw around the area where I want the Christmas suit. Depending on your situation, you may need to adjust the thickness of the brush. Also, if the brush drawing goes wrong, use the undo button or the eraser. Now that I am finished, let's save the mask. Now let's move on to the prompt. I already wrote a prompt in my notepad, so let's copy that and paste it into the positive prompt. The prompt says, a woman wearing a red Christmas suit. Now let's run the workflow and wait for the result. The generation is completed, now let's take a look at the generated image. The result is really good. You can see how good the inpainting was. Now let's try another inpainting task. I am going to choose another image. Let's select this image of a lantern. Click open. This time, I am going to add a bird on this lantern. So first, let's open the mask editor. Now let's draw a mask around the area where the bird is most likely going to stand. I will draw a mask that looks similar to a bird standing. Now let's save the mask. Now let's write the prompt. I already have a prompt in my notepad, so let's copy that and paste it inside the positive prompt. The prompt says, a bird standing on the lantern. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. The generation is completed. Now let's take a look at the result. Well, like before, this result is also nicely done. Let's open it in a new tab and you can see how good the result is. So, like this, you can do a lot of inpainting with Z-Image Turbo. I do like the results, but I think the control net needs more improvements because there are some cases where the inpainting fails. But overall, this control net is better than the previous one. So guys, try my workflow and the control net, check the results for yourself, and let me know what you think about this video and the control net. Thanks for watching, see you soon with another video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel.